The New Marketing Show is brought to you by Trinity Web Media. Trinity Web Media solves business problems through effective digital marketing. TrinityWebMedia.com. Hey, everyone. Welcome to The New Marketing Show brought to you by Trinity Web Media. I am Greg Taylor, and I am here with my co-host, Kevin Everly. Kevin, how are you? Hey, Greg. How's everything going? Not bad. Not bad. How's uh, So I'm in California. It's beautiful out today. You are in New Jersey and... Woke up to a few inches of snow. You know. To find a few inches. Three inches, 10 inches, six inches? I think we're at like two or three now. <clears throat> oh, gee. Jeez, that, that, that's like nothing. No, not bad. It, just funny. I mean, everything had melted from a warm rain earlier in the week. So it's just kind of funny to wake up and see what you saw a couple of days ago. Yeah. Well, it's like Groundhog Day, I guess, over and over and over. Pretty much. Well, don't worry. Spring is coming soon, right? Yeah. It's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. So today I wanted to talk about, I think, you know, the marketing methodology and the marketing premise of amplify, clarify, and don't intrude and kind of how that fits into solving problems. And um, also, you know, we lost a, a great American storyteller and sports broadcaster in the last week, Keith Jackson of ABC Sports. And, you know, he would uh, he'd have his own catchphrases, oh, Nelly or the granddaddy of them all for the Rose Bowl. So he's definitely a miss, but. One of his things that he said when he approaches every broadcast with that in mind. So what are your thoughts? I mean, it's ampli- the amplification, clarification, and staying away from, you know, staying outside of that message is something you and I have definitely talked about more and more as of late. Um, and I think before we go into the nitty gritty, what does that even mean to you? You know, what does that mean to the average, you know, marketer or consumer? You, you know, I think that, you know, that's a great question. Uh, you, you know, I, I think that, I think it kind of weighs in with the same thing with some sales strategy, right? I, I think that everybody like everybody likes to buy, but nobody likes to be sold. I agree with that 100%. Right? <clears throat> right? I mean, just think about that. I mean, think about, you know, just, just think about that. I think that to amplify, clarify, and don't intrude – Sort of fits in that same thing. Everybody wants to hear a good story. Everybody wants to broadcast, you know, receive a good story. And, you know, marketers need to broadcast good stories. But I think that what the biggest part is not being too intrusive, not being over the top, not being the, you know, every two seconds knocking on someone's door, sending an email. And I think that don't intrude, honestly, is the part of that whole methodology and message that people miss. Absolutely. I, th- I think a, a lot of times, you know, the don't intrude is the solicitations. I mean, the, the solicitations talk to the audience who wants to be spoken to. You can't hit everybody out there, you know, all the time. I think the messages are always going to be, what, you know, a brand message is always going to be better received by the audience who wants to receive that message. Right. And, and a clear message also it will never uh, an uncl- let me go back an unclear message will never be received sure. even if you do amplify it so maybe i mean maybe you know in all due respect of course to, to Keith Jackson and everything but maybe for our intents and purposes and i did say it correctly intent with a t and purposes <laughs> not intents s e purposes right <laughs> uh, but you know in all due respect to to that maybe it, it should be clarify amplify and then don't intrude don't intrude should always be you know or or, i mean don't intrude is so goddamn important we can play it say don't intrude (laughs) clarify amplify and don't intrude (laughs) but you you know what i mean but i think that really clarify solves by by having your message clear and clarifying your message i think that solves a lot of marketing problems a lot of marketing disconnects that are experienced by that a lot of brands experience. I mean, I get that. And I think that a lot of that has to be with our attention online and, you know, social media as a tool, you have three, four seconds at best to grab mm-hmm. someone's attention. I think our messages have become broader and broader trying to, you know, throw in that big net and try to bring in as many fish as we can. I, I totally agree with that. You know, one thing I think to, uh, to your point, and I think, you know, to add to your point and maybe to disagree a little bit with what you said was, <clears throat> you know, I think that we have two to three seconds the first couple of times 
our brand is seen and our messages are broadcast. Okay. Right <clears throat> now, follow me here. Ready? So if it catches my attention, if it catches my eye, the f- you know, and it and I give it the three seconds. Cool. Right. The second time I see it, if I give it the three seconds. Cool. Now, let's talk about the third, fourth, fifth times that we see that message. And it's something that I keep going back to. Do I still give it two or three seconds? Or now am I willing to give it more? You, you, you know, I, arguably, those are the most three, four, five. Those are the most important touches because it dictates the future of the relation. Once you get past those, mm-hmm. there is no more touches. You're ingrained into, you know, that, that brand's ingrained in your lifestyle if you've accepted it past that point. Uh, yeah. Now that that I I totally agree with. I think that the the, the first touches of our, our course very very important, vital to to grab somebody's attention. The second touch is actually sort of the, you, you know, it's like it's like. It, this, the, the, those the, the middle touches are the ones that are going to hook them and reel them in. So if you think Absolutely. of it as a fishing analogy, <laughs> and the first touch, the first couple of touches, and the first couple of times people, someone sees your message is casting your line in the water. Mm-hmm. Middle is whether you're getting is going to determine whether you get a nibble or whether you get a bite. Or do you bring that fish into the boat? Exactly, and then further on down the line is when you start to really like hone it in and. And make them brand loyalists, brand enthusiasts, um, uh, user-generated content creators for your brand. And I think that that's that's the part. But let's go, you know, go back to having clear message, right? That's I think that a lot of problems can be solved if you don't if if you have a clear message. You know, there was a uh, some hashtag blunders. You know, uh, me and uh, our social media. A strategist Tammy Harvey talk about from time to time hashtag blunders that we see, and one of the greatest ones that I I loved was uh, the, the Dallas Cowboys went and played in the UK, and they used the the hashtag Cowboys UK. Now that that's a real unclear message because if you read it also quickly, it says Cowboys suck, <laughs> right? And that's that's your team doing that. So <laughs> think about that. So it's like, could their message yeah. have been clearer? Yeah. Yes. You know, I think couldn't have been, you know, better thought out. You know, if you amplify a shitty message, it's going to be a shitty message heard by a lot of people. Yeah. It doesn't change the root of the, me- the content of that message. Yeah. Think about it. Right. It, it, right, right or wrong. I, I mean, it, that's the, the basis of the message change regardless of amplification. Uh, absolutely. So if you if you amplify a clear message, now you're going to start to 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 bridge the gaps and the disconnects, you know, and the problems that you have with your clients, you know, a a big problem that we solve for our clients is nobody knowing what they do in services, because mostly we work with, you know, small brands, startups, niche, you know, we work with niche industries, you know, and it's like, if that message isn't clear, Especially in the niche. I mean, think about that. Think about if if you, you know uh, if one of our clients, Couple Cabana, say that right. If we didn't position them correctly as a mobile espresso com- company and trade show company, and and what they do, in all fairness, everybody listening, is Couple Cabana. They do wonderful. They, they cater. You know, they do coffee catering and espresso, mobile espresso catering. You know, to big events and to private parties, espresso bars, yeah, espresso bars, yeah. like the whole nine, but. If we weren't clear about that, people might just think yeah, – There's so much room for confusion. Yeah. Oh, there's tons of room for confusion. And also what there is is that there is – maybe people would look for them online. They don't know where a physical location is. They might just think they're another coffee shop. They might want to plug their laptop in to their Wi-Fi and grab a, a cup of coffee or something and keep going. So it's like you, you know, without a clear message there, nobody's going to know what they – what what service they provide and again you know what we don't talk about our clients and what services they provide we talk about them in what problems do they solve <clears throat> you know so it's like it, it, and going back to what we were saying is like if that isn't a clear message we can we can do every you know we can have the best strategy we you know you can have the this the that but if it's not clear it's still not going to be clear and if you broadcast an unclear message it's going to be unclear to more people. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, so in our, I mean, so 
broadcasting and, and amplifying an unclear message gets you further from the goal. Oh, always. Than taking care of that. Always. And you know what else it'll do? I think that it would, with enough time and enough energy around the unclear message, I think that it would also probably create some dissension among the organization. Because then, you know, if you think about it internally, right? You know, I was always trained that, you know, the next person that you work with in within your company, treat them as an internal customer. You know, treat them the same way you would treat a paying client. You know, and I think that with enough uh, of the message being murky or unclear or muddy, I think within an organization, they can say, who are we? What do we really, what do we really do? When all it is, is, oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. You know who we are. You know what we do. We fucked up and we put out the wrong message. So let me ask you a question. Can you think of any instances where brand, you know, big brands have done this and taken it back, you know, had to, had to address that head on? Um, uh, I can. I think that, you know, I, I see a lot of this when it, when it comes to brand standing, when brands take a stand on something. I think that uh, a, a brand like going back a couple of years, Chick-fil-A, when they, you know, have their extreme, not extreme, I'm sorry, when they have their Christian morals, at, you know, which to me are extreme, but to them are, the, you know, are, are the regular. <clears throat> they are what they are. Yeah. You know, when they said that they didn't, you know, they weren't going to, you know, uh, they didn't approve of same sex relationships and this and that. I think that they were saying that we hate everybody. <laughs> I think the message that was received mm-hmm. is we hate everybody, you know, because everybody who's not like us. exactly everybody who doesn't look like us. We, we don't like them. And okay. that's the message that was sent out. I don't believe that was their intent because who mm-hmm. in their right mind would put that out there? I think their intent was, you know, we're a Christian organization and we, you know, have a strict set of guidelines this fall and this is outside of our guidelines whether it's mm-hmm. smoking or caffeine you, you know as other religions or whatever it, it, that's insignificant but i think that the message was sent out really poorly and i think that it was broadcasted to everybody and what sure. and it allowed everybody else an opportunity to say i don't want to work with you which is their right but i don't want to work with you based on these facts when the facts mm-hmm. aren't were you know aren't really the facts the facts are the interpretation of an unclear marketing message i mean and that's also the so think about the the risk you run when you have that unclear message how it could burn like wildfire in the wrong direction because of that unclarity without a doubt <clears throat> now if you have an un- so if you uh, if you have an unclear message right that is is broadcasted and amplified Right. Typically, bad news spreads quicker than good. You know what I mean? And bad messages spread quicker than, you know, who, who would have, you know, who said, oh, my, uh, other than us marketing nerds and the people that I, uh, we associate with, like, who else would say, oh, my gosh, did you see GoPro's campaign? That was amazing. Right. They yeah. would have said, hey, did you see company X's campaign? What a bunch of assholes. What the what the hell? are? Why would I ever want to? Right. But you never say, hey, I saw that campaign. Wow, that message was really clear. And they got it directly to me. And you know what? Once they gave me the message, they let me be myself. And wow, that was really cool of them. Not only us marketing nerds talk about shit shit like that. Right. So, I mean, most of I can think of a couple examples that are kind of relevant with it, with a really clear message and mainstream catching on. What? Uh, Last year, I don't, I think it was last holiday, the Frankenstein Apple commercial. Mm. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Just a simple. I think. I think there was two words put on screen the whole time, and you know. So the message with that was: our machines are simple to use. That even, mm-hmm. you know, a Frank, even Frank, it's like even a monster or somebody else could take it out of the box and and use it right away. You know, and, and I mean the the message is, the message is you know, three hundred and sixty degrees. Yeah. You know, the message comes between, you know, the brand image, you know the the words that the brand's saying, the the video that, or the, the, the visual. pictures, the visuals that they're using to support everything. Now, sometimes your visuals and, you know, sometimes your visuals and, uh, and, and how you put them out there are just as powerful as anything else. If you want to think about Instagram, how many times you just see an image and you, and it evokes some sort of feeling or emotion and you like it, or you share it, or you, 
if it's inappropriate, you, you report or wh- however you interact with that. Right. So that's, you know, just, you know, you know, just using an image. But I, I think that the more time spent on being clear, man, I mean, how many, how, how much does that solve alone? You know, it's funny, you know, a, a lot of times in marketing, we're forced to be reactive and not so proactive with our approach. You know, this is one of those aspects where being proactive, you know, extremely proactive, especially with formulating any message your brand sends, you know, could save a ton of headache and, you know, actually complete brand goals at the end of the day instead of harming them. Yeah. I mean, for what I do for the company, you know, what I do it has to be proactive, you know, mm-hmm. and not reactive, <clears throat> you know, you, you, your team and the, the media team, you know, in a content team, you're being reactive to situations or things you see or this or that. You know, me being on a strategy and development side, I have to be proactive and mm-hmm. and give you something to react to. If you think exactly. of it that way, right? <clears throat> That's a strategy. You know, when it when it when when a strategy really when it comes together in my mind, I can be proactive and then let you be reactive when situations occur. <clears throat> the, the thing is, is, you know, the, the biggest thing that, you know, I want to touch a little bit more on is don't intrude. What is that? You know, don't intrude to me means I forget what the heck it was. I signed up. I, I think I signed up for like a, an online, like an e-newsletter for uh, jazz guitar. Right. <clears throat> and it was just music theory for jazz guitar. I'm a music theory nerd and blah, blah, blah. You know, and the, the, the sent me in two emails a day. And while I'm a jazz enthusiast and I love, you know, want to learn about that stuff, to me, it was like, whoa, the message wasn't clear. If the message was clear, hey, we're going to email you twice a day. And there were different messages. They weren't like they sent me the same one twice, which is forgivable to for a short period of time. And then it's unforgivable. But it, they were different. But if, but if, if it would have said, hey, we're going to email you twice a day, and in perpetuity, I would have been like, no, thank you. And I would have moved on. But I think that, you know, the, the don't intrude has everything to do with people like to be – people like to buy. People don't like to be sold. People like to – I think people actually like to receive marketing messages because how many times like, you know, dilly dilly or, you know, even like catch lines when it comes to ad things or, you know, sure. uh, Yo Quiero Taco Bell. Oh, yeah. you know, like actually, and a uh, quick, quick side note, my, one of my buddies, Bernie O'Dowd worked on that ad campaign. Uh, you okay? He might've been the art director uh, at sure in LA. It's pretty funny. But, uh, but what, what it is, is that how often are we pushing stuff out there to people and th- they want it, you know, to them, it's, it's pop culture, right? Yo, yo, Taco Bell, the Energizer Bunny, Where's the beef? All that stuff is like, think about the where's the beef campaign, right? On TV, it was like, well, what's the message there? The competitors, fast food hamburgers have less beef than Wendy's. They did it, you know, and I mean, it was on a, it was an intrusive message where they're pounding you and you're hitting it with it, but like it became pop culture. Yeah. You know, I think that a lot of people do actually want to receive these marketing Mm -hmm. messages, but in a way that doesn't smack them in the face where it's well, like, oh I, my God, I've, I, I know, I know, I know. I saw this. I know. I've always thought about it as the consumer wants to be courted. They don't want to be sold to. Oh, yeah, exactly. And that's just, that's another way, you know, just to say exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, with everybody wants to be – everybody wants to buy. Mm-hmm. People like to buy, but people don't like to be sold. They, and they like the attention that the brand is willing to give, <laughs> you know, yeah. to attract them to their cause. But they don't, you know, they don't want it to impede upon so, or – their lifestyle. Yeah. So being you and I being problem solvers and, you know, running the problem solving company is, you know, the way we say it is if you think about it, if, if you don't do those, you're creating huge business problems, right? If you don't clarify your message, if you do intrude, if you do the exact opposite of what we're saying, amplify, clarify, don't intrude. I'm not going to, you know, amplify i'm not going to clarify i'm i'm going to intrude right you're going to create huge problems if one of those things are off you're still going to create a huge problem if you are unwilling to amplify a clear message and do it respectfully nobody's going to hear it Mm -hmm. right if you're unwilling to clarify 
a, on a, a good message in a respectful way, you're going to have a problem that nobody's going to know what the heck is going on. If you amplify, clarify, and intrude on somebody, you're going to you're going to bore them to death, and you're going to piss them off, and they're going to go away. So, really, if you think about it, from you're creating problems for yourself by leaving one of these components out. I mean, it, it's it's just. I mean, if you look at it, it just that's what will happen. You know, I think that a, a lot of us also struggle with the don't intrude. A good frequency. What's a good day? What's a good time? You know? I feel like the intrusion is something a lot of brands have trouble balancing. I mean, we, a lot of, especially our clients are, hey, we don't want to bother people or, you know, we have, we have brands that are very different. You know, some right. are, right, hey, right. we want to dive in and we're willing to reach out, you know, to people who haven't reached out to us. And some are very hands off and, you know, don't want that. I think there, it, it is tough to find a middle ground. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people are it's like so keyed in on the don't intrude that they're not intrusive enough. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, oh well, I don't want to send out I, I don't want I, I definitely don't want to send out a, a weekly email. I'll send it out monthly. Or uh, you know what, monthly is too much. I'm gonna send it out quarterly. And then all of a sudden it, you're really missing opportunities. I think that when it comes to amplification, especially for what we do, is the more that you can have people self-identify themselves and say, and you know, and uh, you know, a lot of it is with good, solid form creation on your website mm-hmm. and how it integrates into your email software, such as Casa Contact or, or Mailchimp. <clears throat> if you can have those pe- those things all separated into self-identifying quadrants or buckets. You're going to be able to hit them with the message as they want it. So when I did a lot of work with Convince and Convert, you know, Jay was always launched. He was always launching new uh, newsletters and, and whatever. <clears throat> but the, one of the biggest thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure, and we built this into our forum with what category of content do you want, right? What post category do you want? Videos? Do you want it on this topic, this topic? How free? How often do you want it? Do you want it daily? Do you want one weekly? Do you want one monthly? Do you want one quarterly? And we were able to let that 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 audience self identify themselves. They got what they and want. And what happens? Yeah. And then when when you deliver what you want, yeah. right? You almost don't have to worry about the don't intrude. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. So co- going back to your uh, jazz guitar emails, what would have been a yeah. frequency that you would have been okay with? One a day would have been cool, not two a day. One a week would have been great, like a longer one a week. Uh, you know, like, you know, I'm plugged in most of the time, probably too much. You know, on the weekends, you know, if I'm sitting on the beach or if I'm, you know, doing whatever, you know, I typically am still scrolling through content. Plus, I'm a content nerd, you know, mm-hmm. but, you know, when it comes to that stuff. And uh, so, like, if they would have given me an, given, given me an aggregate email at the end of the week on, like, a Saturday – you got to think it's jazz guitar. I'm a professional. I'm a busy person. But if, the, if that email would have come on a Saturday of an aggregate of what was in the other emails. Could have been your Saturday. You think I would have been okay with that? We're on the beach. Exactly. Right. It's exactly what it is, you know, but I didn't have that opportunity. Well, and I think that there's, there's probably also a glitch in their system sending two a day. I'm sure that they, they wanted that content to be dripped out mm-hmm. <laughs> with a little bit more space in between. But I think that. You know, if, if you can have people self-identify, you don't have to worry about the intrusive. If you invite me to your home and you, you know, and I come in, it's like, I'm not being intrusive. You and I was invited. So, so it's like, you know, the, yeah. the, the, when you, when you let, the, when you let people yeah. identify themselves, it's, you know, they're inviting you to send them a, a message. And after that, you know, how, ex- how, how likely are you to sign up for their new le- newsletter again? You know, after that one day of newsletters. Yeah, zero. Exactly. You know what I mean? mean? And that's it. You know, once you know, once you lose the audience, they're gone. Yeah, exactly. And and, and it's a it's a tough it's a balancing act. Yeah. You know, it, it's a definitely a tough thing. So I definitely see the value. I definitely see the value in adhering to this. Mm-hmm. You know, this is you know you know amplify, clarify, don't intrude. It's pretty simple, but I mean. It's something that, you know, hearing him say it the other day, it's something that we've always known and done, but somebody was able to put words mm-hmm. to it. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I always felt that way. I just didn't know what it was called. <laughs> the type of thing. Yeah, <clears throat> so I think that, so I mean, you know, 
I, I think it's just one of the things that marketers can add to their arsenals to to get a good message out to people and to retain. Cool. So what are so going back to the intrusion? What are some of the most intrusive you know tactics that we've seen today? Okay. So I, I think that some of the intrusive stuff is too many emails. Absolutely, uh, spam and just junk. I mean, do do we really even need to say that? Like spam and junk are not acceptable, you know. And then like clickbait. Like if you say that your article, your email, or your message is about one thing, and I get to it, and it's totally different, like a bait and switch type of thing, you're I am I done. I'm gone. There is no coming back from that. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Other things are just like. You know, maybe social media posting uh, maybe more than three times a day. And three is kind of like a bit much, I think. Don't, don't you think so? What do you think a good frequent, What do you think a good social media frequency is? I mean, uh, I mean I, again, I think it depends on the brand. But two, three posts a day, I mean, I, I think you're pushing it there. Does depend on how it's done, you know. If you if you were to post at eight in the morning, right. noon, and five at night, a little different. I mean, I do see people who kind of yeah. post two, three times in a row within the same twenty minutes, and you know, we get it. You have time to take care of this right now, but it's not a good look for your brand. Right, right. What do you think about regional? <clears throat> if I mean, they're separated regionally, like you know, via by. I mean, I, that's just something I'm throwing out there as a question. Like, you know, it's nothing I've really done all that much. Is what if I throw out regional messages to a targeted audience? I think that that you know, then in in that case, mm-hmm. you know, if your one message turns into five messages, you know, what I'm saying, but you, but people are only going to see that once, depending on where they're self selected. I think that that's another thing that almost doesn't even actually count now that I think about it, because. Because if people are only seeing it once, then who cares how it? Just getting it out. Who cares about the how at that point? But I think that, I, I mean, I, you know, um, on the radio or like television or, or whatever, even like, so in, in my house, one room I have cable TV because I'm, I want to watch all the sports that I can watch. And in other rooms, <clears throat> I just stream television through Roku or Apple TV. I know the thing that also say. that kills me, kills me, kills me, kills me is when I'm streaming content and the seven same time. commercial yeah. is played every six, seven times in every, you know, documentary that I watch or every, you know, show on Hulu or if it's the same damn commercial. And you know what the funny one? And it seems like when it's streaming, you got me going, man. These guys must have been super intrusive. <laughs> I think it was always this. It was always the, yes. the fucking one that says, "Have you cut the cord yet?" And I'm sitting there saying, "You want to talk about an unclear message, right? That mm-hmm. was amplified and intrusive, right? That was cut. You the wouldn't cord have received messages because cut the cord. You, 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 first of all, first of all, you're yeah. exactly. What the fuck do you think I did? How how do you but, think I'm seeing you? Right? That's, one, that's, one. that's lazy marketing. That's one. That's one. That's one thing going on and on and on to other networks. You know what I mean? That's like somebody creating one piece of content and be like, oh, fuck it. It'll be good for everybody. But like, so it's like how amplified it. I saw it, you know, yeah. every seven minutes. And then, and then yeah. also it's intrusive. It was like, okay, dude, I get it. I got it. I get it. So I think that this is, this is interesting. And this is something that I think that we should talk more about. And I think that <clears throat> maybe, you know, as the show progresses and we get maybe get guests on or something, I think this is a really interesting topic that we can kind of, you yeah. know, go over with somebody and get somebody else's thoughts on. It's it's pretty it's it's interesting paradigm. It's, it's an interesting shift of paradigm, you know, for sure. So I think that you know I think that uh, I I think that this is something I just want to keep my my finger on the pulse and just kind of and just see how more how much how prevalent is this yeah. without ever knowing yeah. now that we have a name for it, you, you know, now that we have a name for it. I think, well, I, Absolutely. I and myself, I can be, I'll be more aware of it. So cool. Well, any, any thoughts with, why as we wrap this thing up? I mean, not, so I, I do have one more question as far as amplify. How, how do you feel, you know, once you have your message, you know, what is the best mode for a brand to amplify? I know it's going to change by brand, but what are some of your favorites? 
I, I think that this is this is a simple one. I think that you amplify your message where your audience is, there you and where your audience self selects and says that they are. You know, if you're a tech, if you're a tech company, you know, there were probably going to be you know over here at A, B, and C. You know, if you're a hospitality company, they're going to be over here at D, E, and F. You know, I think that that is how so you select. What you're saying is you, you know, don't select; you let the audience select where they are, and you go. Yeah. Or, or, you, or, you know, you, you, you work on a hunch, you work on your instinct saying, okay, this is my industry. This is where we go. You know, it's sort of like, you know, uh, if you think of it in a bar, bar scene, if, depending on what bar you go to, you're, you're typically going to know what kind of sure. person, the sports what bar type gonna of have a different person audience is going to go the, there. The, you know what I'm saying? The smoke, a sports bar is going to have, yeah. sports bar is going to have, sure. sports bar is going to have the smoky, sports wall dive, you, yeah. know, you know, you know, this bar is going to, yeah. You know, a pool hall is going to have pool players, you know, stuff like that. So I think that you can you can select at first, but then let, the more that you let them self-select, the more the more the or the more of a chance you're you awesome. have to have your message really, really received. So cool. Cool. Well, that was awesome. I, this is this is really interesting. Like I said, I definitely want to keep my finger on the pulse of, you know, what what's going on with this now that we have a name for it. Let's see how. Absolutely. You know how it actually plays into our daily thing. So, yeah. other than that, other than that last question, anything wrapping up? You got anything uh, looking forward different. to this week? More snow, more snow, moving into uh, more snow, uh, moving more into snow. the you know new year. Yeah, I I, I hear you. I, I'm just um, fighting a flu that I've had for the last like two weeks. So hopefully, just more of staying on the mend and uh, doing more of this. So I really appreciate everybody watch everybody watching everybody listening. And uh, feel free to subscribe. We're on Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud. Where else are we, Kev? Uh, Google Play. So just anything that you need or anything you want to hear a, a show about, just let us know, and we'll keep bringing you content. So, Kevin, talk to you later. Sounds good. Greg, okay. have a Bye. good day. Thanks, everybody, for your time. Bye.